here's something else I want to talk about, Joe, and we, we touched on it with Bomber, but this is now officially the excuse that Mr. Luxon is giving for cutting and pasting the speech. This was from the AM show this morning. So, Let's have so a listen. Well, look, it's very deliberate. We want a consistency of message, you know, what I've felt about the truth. So it's very deliberate. Repeating was very deliberate. Like I've already said to Bomber, um, Horsh, I don't, such I, what, bullshit. what I don't actually understand from the, maybe, I don't know whether I would, no, I probably would, I'd go, I don't find that answer particularly plausible for these reasons. If it was definite, why did you run away from Jenna Lynch and the treaty grounds and not answer that question yesterday? If it was deliberate, why didn't you mention it? And, you know, I don't find that plausible. They never do that. They never push back quite as hard as that. Maybe they can't, maybe, I don't know, I don't know what their managers would say, but that's the response that he needs to be given. I don't find this plausible treaty is what I've felt about the treaty for a long time. What I felt in 2023 will be what I felt this year, and that's actually what I'm going to do next year. So people can trust us when we say there will be no year. change to the Locked treaty. Yeah. So, so no, need, no reason to go. It'll be funny if it's different, won't it? Everyone will be going like, why did you change it? Particularly as Prime Minister, uh, my views and our views on that. Is that actually how you're explaining this? You, you want a consistency of your message? Because what it looks like is, I mean, I know it's inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, but it's now an unnecessary distraction, and it just looks a bit lazy. No, look, it is deliberate. We want to, we want to make sure we've got a consistency of communication. Bullshit. Message, you know, as you yeah, I call bullshit. So does Lloyd. Look at his face. Understanding about what our government what? believes about the treaty. The uh, I expressed it, I thought, well in 2023. There are extracts that I used again in 2024. There, and again, Extract. I'll have the same similar message as I suspect in 2025. Uh, in that context, I was explaining the arc of New Zealand's history and progress, uh, starting from 1840, what the treaty has meant for us, why it's made us a better country. And I think that's been expressed well. Um, I went on to then talk about our vision for 2040 and what we're trying to do as a country together uh, and obviously our plans for the current current term. So, um, Such a good point made by Bomber just tonight. Who gives a crap about 2040 when the country is you know, about to explode today? We want to know about today. Today is the time that we're talking about and we should be focusing on. Yeah, consistency of message matters uh, and I want people to understand there is no change to the Treaty of Waitangi. There is no change to any treaty settlements. The treaty is our past, present and future. I mean, now, now you're making this even more of an unnecessary distraction because you're not just saying, yes, it was sloppy, um, I'm sorry for it, I'll talk to um, my speechwriters, and then we can all move on. Now you're saying that this is intentional and you're, you're after consistency of message and you might use the same speech again next year. Why don't you just apologise and we'll move on? Well, again, you know, consistency of message, as I said, is important. It's what I believed last year, it's what I believe this year, it's what I believe next year. OK, so, so will you do the same at like an Anzac Day ceremony? Will you just recycle the speech you, you gave at Anzac last year? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know, but the point is, um, you know, what I believe oh, very strongly I is that the treaty's know. been very important to New Zealand's history. We've wrestled with it. Uh, we've gone up and down and we've had, uh, you know, challenges around it. It's caused pain for people. But we've actually entered into that reconciliation process, I think, very constructively as a country. Uh, and that's what we want to continue to do as we go forward. Okay, can I talk about the right so there you go this is so, sort of a part of the same conversation we've just been having but this I just I, it's important to highlight horseshit when we see it now again especially from the government lots of people are always like well did you say such and such about the other guys these guys are the government now these guys are in the news now these are the guys making the headlines now so the majority of what we talk about is going to be these guys no matter where we sit politically mm. and it's just I, I almost I wonder if they did a fist pump when they thought of that reason last night, or I wonder if they're embarrassed today about how no one believes the reason. I wonder which one of those things actually happened, but it's just, he, my guess is he had no idea it was exactly the same. I mean, I mean, not to defend him, he probably does, uh, he's probably done 200 speeches in the last 12 months. Mm. So he probably had no idea, which probably means it went to the back room. And we should have a look if anyone from parliamentary services has been let go from his office while they're trying to say it was intended, but really in the back room, someone's been like, you can leave. Thanks very much for putting me in this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect him to remember what he said at Waitangi last year. Like, I also don't believe that he wrote that speech. Mm. I believe that that's a, that's a speech writer. Now, and, and that's not a criticism. Like lots of lots of leaders do that. They've got a speech writer. They'll take a pass at it, put their own language into it, and away away you go. But somebody on his jobs team to go shit. Did we just pull something out of a binder? 
can can we have a look at last year's speech just to to see if there's any points we you know because a lot has changed since last Waitangi Day. For sure, it's his first Waitangi Day as Prime Minister, and he is responsible for bringing a hugely contentious issue right to the fucking forefront, and people were big mad about it. What a fantastic opportunity to show that you're a leader, and he didn't do it. And now he's also not being a leader by trying to cover his ass more than he's he's saying, you know what? Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I fucked up. To, to even go, you know, that 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 stupid throwaway question, are you just going to recycle your speech for Anzac Day? And the answer was, I don't know. Yeah. What the hell like way to just set up another issue now there's going to be interns at all the major uh networks just going okay cool pull a speech from last anzac day let's true see as. that is so he true. Is setting himself up for someone yeah. to go through these speeches at these events and again credit where credit's due spider hoof